Doberman is an incredible breed, a fascinating breed, and one of my favourite breeds on the planet, and for good reason. And we have the Doberman's fascinating history to thank for being the dog that we know and love today. So in today's video, I'm gonna hand you over to one of my breed history experts who's gonna break down this fascinating history of the Doberman, ideally in under five minutes. Imagine a world where your taxes weren't automatically seized from your paycheck electronically by the IRS or HMRC or whatever your country has before you even received it. Well, you've just imagined 19th century Germany, and indeed any country at any point in history before the advent of the computer, but it is in 19th century Germany where we lay our scene. Back then, taxes were collected by hand, by human beings, at regular points throughout the year. There are tax evaders now, and there were tax evaders then. Only, instead of multinational corporations or billionaire celebrities, it was usually those who couldn't afford to pay the tax man. Usually, they would hide, but occasionally they would get violent brandishing weapons or releasing their own dogs. So being a tax collector in the 19th century was difficult and sometimes a dangerous business. Enter Louis Doberman of Apolda, who served as a tax collector, but also as a kennel owner, as tax collecting was sporadic work with plenty of empty days. He made it his mission to develop a dog that embodied many of the features found in different types of dogs he observed, but which none could claim to have in combination, so that he and his fellow tax collectors could operate with more assurance of their safety. He needed brawn, brains, biddability, and a backbone of steel for the job. So he started to interbreed dogs with these features, and a good nose for his purposes. Whilst he was not a public or show breeder, but a utilitarian with a goal in mind, he kept no stud books, meaning that modern DNA profiling and logic must suffice here when determining which breeds were involved in this early process. Most likely he started with the German Shepherd dog, which was already endowed with supreme intelligence, scenting abilities, and work ethic. To this mixture, muscularity and brawn were added, most likely from the Rotti or Beauceron, or a combination of the two, who also donated the black and tan coat that has since become iconic. Though these genes were likely reinforced by the addition of the German Pincher. To give the gloss we recognise, or more likely with the intention of imbuing the early Doberman with hunting instincts necessary for the role, Doberman probably added another iconic German breed to the mix, the Weimaraner. This is conjecture underpinned by anachronistic science, but stands to reason when looking at the outcome in photos of early specimens. The breed in its early stages was so stunningly successful at its job, and in other similar roles that were given to it as it spread the country, that Doberman's death in 1894 did not spell the end to the reign of this working dog. Indeed, it barely even slowed the process, because this was just the beginning. The founder of the first Doberman breed club, Goller, worked hard to promote the breed, advertising the splendour of his own stock with maniacal fervour, and even by naming a bitter after the Doberman in the distillery that he owned. His work, and that of others too various and obscure to credit comprehensively, made sure that the Dobermans would thrive both in Germany and overseas. By this time, the breed was being refined and developed by those who adopted it for their own purposes, making the most of the absence of an official breed standard for the dog by now. Into the mix unmistakably went greyhounds, who made the shape leaner and the dogs faster and more visually acute, whilst also donating their hatred of the cold. Other unknown breeds went into the mix, but there were no pinchers, the German word for terriers in there, making the American decision to append the term to their version of the breed, whilst also stripping the name of one of its ends, somewhat strange. Regardless of the now diversifying lines and confused origin stories, the Doberman uh, gained AKC recognition in 1908, and by the 40s had been named America's official war dog despite its German roots. Nowadays, Dobies are still used in working roles, particularly in protection, combat and service, rather than anything agricultural, but are ever more successful as family, personal companions, as well as successful show dogs. Keeping true to their origins, a show doby who is unconfident will not win. I hope you found that information as fascinating as I always do. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new here. We make multiple videos like this every single week on the Doberman, so I cannot wait to see you here on the next episode.